Hey guys, so today we're doing a video on how to graph inverse tangent and cotangent functions. So as you know, an inverse, what must be true is it has to be a one-to-one -one function, the original function. Um, and that means that it must pass the horizontal line test pretty much, is the simple way to think about it. Um, and what the horizontal line test means is that I can draw a horizontal line across this paper and it's only going to touch the graph one time. Clearly, as is, this tangent function can, is not one-to-one -one and does not have an inverse. So what we, what we have to do is we have to restrict its domain somehow and make it one-to-one. -one. And this domain right here is the way to do it. x ranges from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And you can see that within this one domain, so we don't have this anymore, we don't have this anymore, it is a one-to-one -one function. You can do the horizontal line test. It's always going to pass. So that's going to be our um, domain. And then our range of this just within this um, domain is all the way from negative infinity to infinity. And now you know when we take an inverse function, you swap x's and y's. Swap x's and y's. Okay, so now if y was um, negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, now x, the domain, is going to range from, not it's not going to include it, it's going to be negative infinity all the way to infinity. And then the y is whatever the x was, so that's going to range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So I can draw that in now. We're going to have y, y from going all the way down to negative pi over 2 all the way up to pi over 2. I made this really big. Um, and then it's going to extend infinitely, so we know something's going to be happening. Um, and now we can take points from this graph, and we can just graph them in here. So I would take, first thing, I would take 0, 0. You swap the x's and y's, you get 0, 0. So we know we're going through the origin. And then, well, you know how the asymptotes were at uh, x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals pi over 2. That's going to be the same thing here, except now they're going to be at the y values. So there's still going to be an asymptote at that pi over 2. It's just going to be a horizontal one now. So we can draw those in. And yeah, I forgot to write that these are not inclusive. These are just parentheses. That was my bad. So because it's asymptotes, so they never actually um, touch those points. Um, and then now we can see as the x was closer and closer to negative pi over 2. So we could say, let's make up a point here. We could say pi over, negative pi over 4. x was negative pi over 4. We knew y was something in the negatives, so y was a negative. And now we can swap that, and we can say, OK, so when y when x is a negative, y is going to be negative pi over 4. And we can graph that point. So when x is some negative number, we can say that's going to be negative pi over 4. So we know it's going to be down here somewhere. We could say right here. Could be anywhere, really. And then now we can see we're seeing a general shape start to come. We're going to go from this asymptote. We're going to have to somehow get up to that asymptote. So let's test another point. We can take a look at... Um, Closer when we're positive, so when we're at something like pi over 4, we could take the tangent of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2, but we don't really need to do that. All we need to know is that it's a positive number. Then we can switch them, and we can see, okay, when x is positive, y is going to be positive, which in this case, it is pi over 4, but really all we need to know is that it's positive. And then the graph is going to function, go up like this and make it wavy and it's going to go approach these asymptotes never touching them and that'll be it that's your inverse sine function not sine and uh arctangent function